Cold fronts versus warm fronts. Now initially, the reason why they're called fronts in the first place is because of World War I, when the Norwegian meteorologists were watching the way that air masses were reacting, was similar to the fact that when two armies came at each other, that was called the battle front. And what was left behind was a pretty violent act. Well, the same thing was true between air. When two different temperature airs were colliding, some pretty violent weather was occurring. Now you name a front based on the air mass that's moving faster and overtakes the other one. So in the top here we see cold front, and the reason why it's a cold front is because the cold air is catching up with the warm air. And then at the bottom here you see warm front, and that's when warm air is moving faster and overtaking the cold air. Let's take a look at the cold front first. You can see the cold front line is sloped downwards, and also you have cumulonimbus clouds, pretty large, tall clouds forming here. And the distance across the bottom flowing from west to east is only 500 kilometers. Now that's not to be a, sp a specific number every time, but it's just going to be used for comparison later on. Now this cold air comes in, and because it's dense, it will sink. That means this warm air that's already over here needs to be pushed upwards as this cold air basically plows its way in. So these changes are rather abrupt and quite violent in the terms of weather. If you were standing down here on the surface and this was coming towards you, the changes would be pretty quick but also over pretty quick. So that's where pretty powerful storms can occur is when cold air is rushing in towards warm air. Now a warm front does still bring some weather along with it, but you can see that this slope here, this line, is a little bit more gradual. And so the changes aren't as dramatic, but it still brings in weather. And instead of plowing its way through, because warm air is less dense, it will just kind of slide over this cold air. Now if you were a person standing on the surface here, the first thing you would see as a sign that weather was coming your way was up here you would see some high flying clouds. But then gradually as that storm moved closer to you, you're going to start to see the clouds get lower and lower to the ground and rains being pulled along with it. So earlier I mentioned that the 500 kilometers on the cold front, now comparing that to the 1000 kilometers as a reference number for the warm front just shows that it's just a longer, more gradual change, it's not quite as sudden. And you can see, see here again it's showing from west to east, and that's just showing that direction mainly because winds generally move from west to east in a larger air mass because of the northern hemisphere. So here's a quick review again. A cold front is called a cold front because cold air overtakes warm air. And it does so quite forcefully in this plow-like motion where it forces warm air to go up. And again, remember, when cold air and warm air collide, especially if that warm air is moist and has a lot of humidity to it, it's going to cause a lot of condensation to occur, which is going to form a lot of those clouds. On the opposite end, a warm front is named a warm front because warm air is moving faster and catching up with cold air. And the changes are more gradual, and it's not as abrupt, and it takes a little bit longer as warm air overtakes the cold. Well, now you can say that you know this concept front to back, or back to front. Huh?